Hey guys, what is going on? It's Don here from Nova Spirit Tech, and today we are going to be taking a look at the Kados Vim 3. So let's get started. If you guys are longtime viewers of mine, you probably know that I am a big fan of the Kados products, the Vim 2, the Kados Edge, and now the Vim 3. So we're going to be comparing this Vim 3 directly to its predecessor, which is the Vim 2. Now to get started, you can see that they both look exactly the same, the sizing, the format, but there are minor changes to the appearance. One, the infrared is moved to the side a little bit more, and the USB 3 are slightly longer on the Vim 3 than on Vim 2, which means you can't use the Vim 2 case on the Vim 3, which I don't mind anyway, because the Vim 3 case is awesome. It looks really good. So here are all the products that are included with the Kados Vim 3. We got the remote, the power, the case, a heat sink, and obviously the Kados. Now starting from the back, you're gonna see a USB 3, then an on-the-go USB-C, an ethernet port, and then another USB 3. And the opposite side of that, you're gonna see a 40-pin GPIO, which is not the same as the Raspberry Pi, and also the infrared port. And on one side of it, you have three buttons, which is the power, function, and reset, same as the old model. Now this new board has a brand new six core CPU, which is two less cores than the old Vim 2, but still a lot faster. And I'm gonna show you benchmarks in a little bit. Now this new CPU is also using the big little system where you have four cores that run at higher speed and two cores running at a slower speed. The first four cores is running at 2.2 on an A73 framework, while the smaller two CPUs is at 1.8 on A53. The model that we're looking at today is the standard one, then they also have a pro one. This only has two gigs of RAM with 16 gigabyte eMMC, which isn't a big turnoff because now this new guy supports PCIe, which means you could actually put in an NVMe or M.2 in here. Unfortunately, you won't be able to use the M.2 when the case is on just because there's no way to put on that way. As far as the power draw on this guy, it's pretty impressive. Now on idle, it's running at 1.8 watts on five volts and on the Vim 2 at idle, it runs at 2.8 at five volts. On full tilt, the Vim 3 runs six watts at five volts and on the Vim 2 only runs 4.2 watts, which means it draws a little bit more power. And that's not using an M.2 on there at all. It's just using its straight up cores. Now, as far as the benchmark goes, I ran a Lin pack on this and dual precision on the Vim 2 is 211. Single precision is 228. And on the Neon is 543. Now on the Vim 3, this is where the impressive part kicks in. Even though it has two less cores, in dual precision, it's doing 1077. Single precision at 1402. And on Neon is 2225 which is almost triple the speed of the Vim 2. Now, if you're gonna compare this directly to a Raspberry Pi, the Raspberry Pi is doing 753 on dual position, 912 on single precision, and Neon is 1970. So this still outperforms the Raspberry Pi 4. Now, as far as disk speed goes, and I'm only gonna be testing the eMMC, read speed is 208, write speed is 55 megabytes. And on the Vim 2, we have 116 megabytes read and 31 megabytes write. So that's almost double the speed of that as just the eMMC. Now, as far as RAM speed, you're gonna notice a huge difference in this as well. The RAM speed is only 4,049 megabytes per second, while the Vim 3, 17,361 megabytes per second. I know, it's fast. I think it's still using a DDR2 on this one, or DDR3 possibly, but this, uh, the new one is using a um, low power DDR4, so you are using the faster RAM. I don't know what the frequency are between the two, so that could hugely impact the scores on this as well. I only tested this on Ubuntu for now. Android tests will be coming soon, but as far as the Ubuntu test, it comes with an XFCE desktop. It's very responsive because it's lightweight desktop and I was able to get almost everything working on a click. It, it, I didn't have to wait for anything and I managed to install Quake. So that worked out pretty well. The Vim 3 now has a built-in NPU, which unfortunately on the Linux sites, it's unavailable right now, but they are getting it to work and I can't wait to test that guy out. Hopefully that will be coming soon so I can make a video about that as well. As far as my conclusions, I've been using the Vim 2 for the longest time to do my compiling. Anytime that I needed to compile software on ARM or um, compile a kernel or something like that, I've always used the Kados Vim 2. And now seeing the difference between the 3 and the 2, I'm probably going to be switching over to a 3 to do all my compiling needs. One of the things about the PCIe is that it requires you to switch it between 3.0 or 
the PCIe, so you only have that choice. And the USB 3.0 ports become a USB 2.0. And right now, currently, there is no easy way to switch it and unless you have a serial interface. So really depending on what your needs, you're not gonna be switching it back and forth. It's gonna be like a one-time deal type thing. Uh, they are coming out with commands where you can run on Android and or Linux right through a command prompt, but it's uh, still to be determined. So I don't know how to do that process yet. And once that comes out, I will be showing you guys. And as far as the Android side, I don't really use these for Android, to be honest. Um, it's great that this one does support Android 9.0. So I might, I'm gonna be testing that out. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please hit that like button if you did. If you guys have any questions about the Vim 3 or the Vim 2, hit up in the comments below. And if you guys are new to this channel, consider subscribing and also hitting that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is going to be out. And as I say, my nerd cave, hack till it hurts.